Folks at home, welcome back to the Crimson Oak Pond, and if you're new to this series, we built this five acre pond over the past year, and it took us several months to get all of the dirt excavated, and we had to bring in several truckloads of clay, and we also built an island, a dock, and got all the structure in place, and then it took a couple of months to get it full of water. After that, we stocked it with a bunch of bait fish, including bluegills and threadfin shad, and not long after that, we stocked it with these little two inch aggressive bass. And we're going to be giving you an update on them here in just a minute and showing you how big they've gotten because they've gotten really aggressive. And as you can tell in these clips, they like to eat. And also in today's episode, the predator becomes prey when we get an up close look at an osprey that stopped by the pond and snagged one of our fish. And I was able to capture some really up close footage of that and even followed the osprey back to its nesting site. And we've got some new members out here at the farm as the raccoons had babies. And speaking of raccoons, there's some strange things going on out at the dove field. But today's video, we're going to be focusing on the eagle nest that we put up a few months back. And as most of you have seen in our previous videos, we have a family of bald eagles out here at the farm. And since nesting season is quickly approaching, we're going to start getting prepared for that by installing some cameras on the eagle tower and hopefully get a live stream set up. But if you missed the video a few months ago, we built an eagle tower nesting site that's about 35 feet in the air, right on the pond's edge. And since then, we've had numerous birds stop by to visit the tower and inspect it for a potential nesting site, including our favorite two birds out here at the farm, the two owls that we call Al Capone and Hooter. And earlier this year, I saw two baby owls in a very similar structure to this, so owls will use this type of platform for a nest. But there's a wide variety of birds out here at the farm, so it's basically gonna be first come, first serve, so as I mentioned, nesting season's coming soon, and once an eagle starts building a nest, it then becomes classified as a protected site, so we need to get the live stream cameras installed before then. So I rented a lift, and we're going to install two cameras, one at the very top of the pole there looking down into the nest, and another dome-style camera beneath the platform that overlooks the pond. And speaking of birds, looks like we have a new species flying in to join us on this project today. A big flock of geese. <laughs> That's the most I've seen fly into the pond at once. So I got a couple guys helping me out today. We got the first camera mounted and things were going smooth until we started getting a little higher on the platform and into a big wasp nest. <laughs> but we got that taken care of. And the next step was using the tractor to dig a trench, which worked out nicely. And wouldn't you know it, we dug up some peanuts. After all, it is still a peanut farm. So we got the cameras installed, the one on top looking down into the nest, and the other dome looking out over the pond. So let's take a quick look at the dome cam and see what type of views we have. So the first thing I love about this camera location is now I have eyes on all the fish. And if you'll pay close attention, there's a little dragonfly taking a sip of water and you can see the little small ripples on the water as he touches down. <laughs> and one of the tiger bass times it perfect, jumps up in the air, and got him a dragonfly snack. But I love this camera angle because I can keep an eye on these shallow coves and watch these topwater blowups. Because like I mentioned, the bass are getting really aggressive. And as many of you know, these topwater shots are some of my favorites. And we also have a much better view of the rest of the farm. We can see down the hill as a group of deer comes out late in the evening. And they're still in velvet, and a lot of the bucks are hanging out in a bachelor group out there in the fields eating some of them summer crops. <laughs> also got a cool shot of a couple nannies fighting. But here's something I was not expecting to see. So these are night vision cameras, and you can actually see the fish down in the water. There's a group of tilapia swimming around eating the algae. But one of the wildest things I saw was the infrared lights on this night vision camera make the fish glow in the dark. These are probably threadfin shad swimming around at the surface. There's also some bugs flying around, but you can make out the fish right there on the surface of the water that are glowing in the dark. That's pretty amazing. And speaking of amazing footage, I just happened to be flying the drone when an osprey stopped by the pond hunting for a fish. So I decided to tail him around and see what it would be like to live a day in the life of an osprey. I even had some close encounters. As you can see right here, I'm not sure if the osprey didn't see the drone, but that was a close call. But it didn't take long before the osprey homed in on a fish. And I knew it was bad news the moment he dove into the water and couldn't immediately lift himself out. 
there's going to be a good chance that it's a bigger fish, which means it's either a bass or a tilapia. So I figured at this point, if he's going to be in the pond stealing our fish, the least we could do is tail him around and learn a little bit about him and maybe even go back and find where he's nesting at. And ospreys are known to be a boasting type bird. It's very common when they catch a fish, they make a couple of laps around just showing off their catch. So I tailed him pretty closely at this point and was hoping that he may even drop the fish back in the pond. So after a couple laps, he decided to leave and head over to a nearby wooded area. And I was thinking this may be his nesting site, but it turns out he just stopped here on a dead tree to most likely just eat the fish. And as I was trying to get in a little closer and see what type of species the fish was, I think I spooked him. So we got another long flight ahead of us, but before we get into that, a quick message from today's sponsor. And today's video is brought to you by Factor. And for those of you that have watched my channel over the past several years, you know how much I love to cook. But I have to admit, when you have those busy days where you're spending all your time on projects, there's nothing better than coming home to a pre-cooked, healthy meal. But the first thing that impressed me about Factor is their meal selections because they have a lot of the types of food I like to eat. Steak, chicken, fish, vegetables. But one thing I really like is they typically add some sort of sauce or different cheeses and will sometimes even spice it up. And Factor even offers meals for different types of diets, including keto, low calorie, or vegetarian. And they have over 27 different meal options each week. And a typical meal plan will range from four to 18 meals per week. And you can even add or reduce that number based on your specific needs. And one of the best parts is there's no prep work or mess to clean up. And since the meals aren't frozen, all you have to do is spend about two minutes heating them up and it's time to eat. So if you're interested in checking them out, either click the link in my video description or head over to go.factor75.com and use my code P-O-G-B-A-M-A-A-U-G-50 for 50% off your first box. And for a little added bonus, they also send out smoothies or keto shakes, which are a perfect little snack for days out here at the pond. Gotta love it. He left the wooded area and is heading out over the peanut fields. And you can see he'll start dipping and diving. I'm not sure if he's trying to avoid me but I've got a new respect for what it's like to be a fighter pilot <laughs> because trailing something moving this fast is not easy. But there were a couple times where I got in really close and I'm starting to think this is one of our largemouth bass. So overall, he ended up flying about a mile away and eventually landed in this tree. And at this point, I wanted to get in closer and see what type of fish it was without spooking him. And the long range lenses on the new drone came in handy with this. And unfortunately, when I got completely zoomed in, it was one of our tiger bass. So the moral of the story is, that's why you always have to fertilize the pond and keep the water dirty, because that stained water will help out with these aerial attacks. And the next best thing I can do is fatten the fish up so they're so big, the ospreys can't lift them out of the water. But that is an amazing shot and crazy to see the wingspan on one of those ospreys. So in an effort to keep the osprey from eating any more fish, I decided to make a peace offering and deliver some fresh red snapper to the Eagle Tower but really, I just wanted to try out a new delivery system that I got for this drone. And I think it's a genius idea because you can see there's a little rod attached to the bottom of this gadget. But this company designed this metal rod to actuate with the use of a photocell. Because a light is the one thing we can turn on with the drone. So whenever I turn that light on, the rod actuates and will drop whatever I'm carrying. Alrighty, we got some fresh snapper out here that we are about to deliver up there to the eagle nest. So now we're gonna test out the payload for this drone with about a two to three pound snapper. And it doesn't look like it has any issues with that kind of weight. So now let's see if the delivery system works. And while I'm flying this drone, the ideas are already going through my head of about a dozen different things you could do with this type of delivery system. But if you guys have any ideas of anything I should carry with the drone or deliver, leave a comment down below. And I may add them to a future video. But mission snapper delivery was executed flawless. And who knows, we may even deliver some fresh sushi to a baby eagle here in the future. But I love this drone because I can keep an eye on the fish and see what's going on at all times. You can see we got a school of bass cruising the banks looking for baby tilapia. And also a big black ball, which is a school of threadfin shad. But I think right now the bass are more interested in the baby tilapia and baby bluegills because they're easier targets. And once one of them decides to strike, they all move in for the kill. And seeing the pond from this overhead view gives you a completely different dynamic and feel for what the fish are doing. You can watch some of these bass waiting on the bluegill feeders to go off. And the moment all the bluegills pile in together, it's easy snack for them. 
You'll also see some times where the fish have a false alarm and they think the feeders are about to go off and they all come rushing in, but no pellets come out. And our feeders go off three times a day and it's amazing how accurate these fish are on knowing exactly what times the feeders are going to go off. It's chaos whenever the protein pellets come out. But here's a clip that I loved watching. Pay close attention, you got two bass sneaking right up the center, basically picking out which one of these bluegills they want to go after. And we'll watch this attack in full speed first. And I had to slow it down to see what happened because this bass grabbed a bluegill and I think he was bigger than he initially thought. So he had to use the bottom of the pond to help secure him in his mouth. And at one point, his belly and tail were completely sticking out of the water. But if you pay close attention, you'll see him swimming at the bottom of the screen to the left with a white bluegill sticking out of his mouth. <laughs> Man, that was wild. So one of the more active places on the farm here recently has been the dove field where we got some decoys and a camera set up. First, we got a pair of armadillos passing by <laughs> and one of them decides to give him the jumping side kick. <laughs> And last year we had a lot of foxes and coyotes attack the doves, but check out this little raccoon. It looks like he just wants to make friends with them. He says, hey little buddy. And George Jones, the possum, stopping by. Somehow he always finds the camera and makes his way into the videos. But you can tell he senses something is off. He's thinking in all my years, never seen any birds sitting on the ground at night. And then we got Mr. Buck Deer stopping by to investigate. Taking a sniff at some of those seeds. <laughs> He's like, oh gosh, I got them stuck in my teeth. That's probably the last time we'll see him messing with the bird seeds. Daytime shot of the raccoon just sliding through. And this raccoon says, nah, there's something suspicious about this. I'm out of here. <laughs> and then runs into the camera. And hey, look, finally one of the things we were trying to draw in. A single lonesome dove is probably happy he found some buddies. And a beautiful shot early one morning of a doe stopping by to investigate. That's why you gotta love the great outdoors. You never know what you're gonna see. And even a few dove decoys in a field can be entertaining. And speaking of doves, they're going to be very happy because we planted the entire farm with a multi-seed mix, including things like brown top millet, sorghum, and one single stem can have hundreds of seeds. So we're going to mow all of this down, turn the green grassy stuff into hay for cattle, and then there will be millions of seeds left on the ground for the birds. So now we're going to take a look at some bluegill feeding clips, but the one thing you'll notice now is that every time the feeders go off, the bluegills come up to eat but the bass come up to eat as well. So sometimes it's hard to spot, but you'll see some big blow ups and bluegills flying through the air here in these clips. So this is interesting because we got a turtle caught in the middle of the chaos, a bass chasing some bluegills, and a kingfisher diving down to get him a bite. And when I slow it down, you can see that he caught a bluegill. <laughs> and even though it was a smaller bluegill, it still seems like a big meal for that small bird. So we're gonna watch a few more clips and pay attention to the flying bluegills. Anytime you see those big explosions, usually there's a bluegill or two flying up in the air. Man, that's wild. And you can see these bass are so aggressive and swimming so fast. That one nearly swims up on the bank or even on that tree limb that's laying right there beside it. <laughs> and that turtle's got to be thinking, what did I get myself into? Kingfisher stopping back by again, but no luck this time. And I could watch these clips all day. And here's another shot of more flying bluegills. Backyard pond looking good. Everything's in full bloom. Now it's time to do a fish feeding. We got a thousand golden shiners delivered overnight from Anderson Fish Farm. We love using them because the fish are always alive and healthy when we get them. <laughs> and Liz is trying her best to feed train these turtles. And she's getting really close 
but they won't quite come up and take it out of her hand yet. So now let's dive underwater and check on Moby and the rest of the gang. There's Moby, he's the last bass left in this pond. And the black crappie we call Outlaw. And yep, just like clockwork, we got another bluegill spawning in the pond. Bluegills will start spawning in April, and most of the times it'll last throughout the summer until you start getting that cooler weather. And you can see where this one's cleaning the rocks off. It's rubbed its tail on them so much. And an up-close look at one of the Ninja Turtles. So the first thing we do when we get the shiners is we acclimate them in the pond for about 15 to 20 minutes. And that's really important for those of you out there that get any of these shipments of shiners. Small fish like this can be very finicky when it comes to water temp, so 15 to 20 minutes. But as you can see, all the fish and even turtles start getting excited. They know the deal, and it's about to be feeding time. And even the turtles start getting a little aggressive. And as luck would have it, every time we do a feeding and we put one camera in the pond, Moby swims to the opposite side. So we're going to have to start getting two different angles in here so we can catch Moby during one of these feeding sessions. And now that it's gotten dark, you know what that means. The underwater green lights come on and more feeding time. So as aggressive as the tiger bass are in the daytime, they get really hungry at night. And I've been experimenting with turning two of the lights off so that I only have one light left on. And that brings all the bait in and you get to see some really cool shots at night. And in our last video, I had a lot of people asking if we had seen Bonnie or Clyde. There's a couple of times I thought I may have seen Clyde because he was in that three pound category. And some of the fish we have in here are two pounds. So it's possible, but I'm not sure. But I don't think I've seen Bonnie yet. I think she's so much bigger that she would definitely stand out. And obviously we're going to try fishing for them. And the moment we ever catch them, we'll know for sure if it's them because we use those pit tags and tagged them before we released them in the pond. And also just to give you an update on a project that we're working on with that, we're going to install some antenna structures throughout the pond. So anytime a bass that has a tag in it swims by the antenna, it's going to register that in a database and we'll be able to track and see where the fish are hanging out and their patterns and things like that. Because we're going to put the antennas at different structure piles throughout the pond, like we'll have one at the green lights here at the dock. So on a night like this, we'll probably register dozens of bass swimming by this dock, including Bonnie or Clyde. But that is a tool that'll help us track Bonnie and Clyde's location, because if I had to guess, Bonnie's probably sitting out there in the deeper parts of the pond, where it's 10 to 12 feet. Usually in summertime, the bigger bass are going to hang out in that deeper water where it's nice and cool. And you can see the sun starting to come up. And several of those bass getting one last snack before it does. And the green lights turn off. And there's a good shot of one of our pet ducks. Got the frog out. Time to do a little bass fishing. I feel like I'm due for another two pounder out here. And if you're not familiar with our process, every time we catch a fish, we tag it. And so it's a lot of fun whenever we catch one we've already tagged. We'll scan it, see how much it's grown, see what areas it likes to hang out around the pond, and also what types of lures it likes to eat. <laughs> first cast with a frog it's hard not to love frog fishing when they blow up on it like that all right this fish hadn't been caught 14 inches long he's going to be 570194 and weighs 1.49 pounds pound and a half all right go eat you some more frogs Got him. <laughs> it's hard to put the frog down. I did have a couple people asking about it and fish with other lures, and that's why I'm hooked on it. Probably a male. Looks good though. Oh, he's been caught. Five seven zero zero three six. New measurement is thirteen and a half inches, and this guy weighs one point three four pounds. And this particular fish is named Ike. And you can see this is the third time I've caught him. And the good thing is he's growing and putting on weight and length each time I catch him. And the shade shack and feed trough are kind of side by side, so he probably lives in that area. And isn't too picky when it comes to lure type. Ooh, that one actually scared me. As much as you can try to prepare for it, it still scares you. 
All right, we got another one that's already been tagged. 1569777. Updated length is 14 and a quarter inches. And this one weighs 1.49 pounds. Second one today. So this particular fish is called Nitro. And the interesting thing about him is I caught him about three weeks ago. And if you look, his weight was higher the first time I caught him than the second time. Now this can sometimes be alarming, maybe a sign that you don't have enough bait in the pond. But I think this time of year, with the water temps being so high, that makes their metabolism extremely high. Losing a tenth of a pound isn't too concerning. <laughs> it wasn't a giant, but man, when they commit to it, something about these little plopping legs that they can't stand. <laughs> I was trying to get the weeds off of it. Little guy. Another one that's been caught. 1571380. And this fish is named Karen. And we probably gave it the wrong name because looking at the data, it's probably a male. I think that's the same fish. Oh, another one tried to eat it. That's a good one. All right, this one had not been caught. I just tagged it. It's 570496. So here's a quick updated look at the spreadsheet, and we've tagged over 50 bass now, and the goal is to tag the first 104 we catch. So there's only a few names that are left available on the spreadsheet. So if you see any empty columns without a name, leave a comment down below. And if you make the list, your fish will battle against the rest for these prizes. All right, I got my little fishing buddy right here that wants to show you her new fishing pole. What kind of pole is it? It's a Minecraft fishing pole. And what kind of bobber you got up there? Um, a Paw Patrol one. And look at the, look, I have Paw Patrol. Paw Patrol, Patrol tackle one. box. Yeah. Now let's see what's in that tackle box. Okay. I let her pick out her own fishing lures. Everything had some blue on it. This, I got this fish. Oh, and this is just for playing. Yeah. And hit, oh. She likes the color hit. blue, yeah. <laughs> as you can see. Yeah. I'm sure almost down in the bottom. Hit. And hit. these are some blue fish. This is blue fish. Worms. Some pretty colorful worms, huh? Yeah. All right. What's the time to go do now? Hit. Fish. All right. Let's go catch a bluegill. Biting it. I get it, Sarah. I think you got him. Nope, nope. All right, Sarah, you got one. <laughs> First fish on a new rod. <laughs> and speaking of fish, little Oliver's learning to swim like a fish and said he can't wait to get out there and bend some rods. And I mentioned earlier we added a new member to the farm, and that's a baby raccoon. It's fun watching this little guy. I'm guessing this is probably his mama. And while she's out there trying to eat, he's not interested in that. He just wants to play. <laughs> and sometimes it makes mama mad. But this little raccoon is being raised by a village of raccoons. And I think I've got a perfect name for him. One of my subscribers commented in the last video and said you should name one of the raccoons George Cooney. So I think that'll be a perfect name for this baby raccoon, George Cooney. And the mama raccoons checking around to see what's coming up and was a little spooked by that deer. So I was just hopping on the tractor and a little baby bunny rabbit hopped out from under it. We're going to see if he's over here. Oh. And now it's time to feed Mr. Tiger. And he's one of the original bass that we stocked in the five acre pond. So this upcoming year, we got the same game plan for him. We're gonna try to put as much weight on him as possible. We just recently moved him into the 300 gallon tank, so he's got room to grow. So he's gonna get a heavy dose of these golden shiners and we'll try to catch him up to his pond mates. All right, folks, that's gonna wrap up this video, but make sure to hit that subscribe button. And I hope y'all enjoyed this one and we will see you all next time.